to Mr. Shipman's class. We have a special edition today for you parents. But before I start all that, let me welcome the talented and beautiful Miss Prudence Williams. Hello, everyone. How are you doing out there? All right. Don't forget, you can always catch me or check, look, check out my books. You can always see, go see December Celebrations or Mr. Shipman's class, The First Day of School. You can see me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube, and TerrenceShipman.com. And my books are available at all major markets. And please, be one of the first people to get our Audible book. Both books are available on Audible. And if you do, email me and I'll give you a special edition of one of the books. Also, remember to give us reviews, 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 good, bad, and different. Give us a review. Go to Amazon Reviewers. Go wherever you want to. Review us. Show the world you liked us. All right, Ms. Williams, we have a special show today. So, Dr. Shipman. Yes, ma'am. Me and you are very important people, and we've had a very wonderful two years because in these two years, we have graduated, and I mean it just the way I said it, we have graduated three children. Yes, we have. Dr. Shipman had two sons to graduate from high school, and I had one son to graduate from high school. And we decided to do this show today to help parents because a lot of time in the excitement of graduation in college, parents get trampled. And I think that me and Dr. Shipman have both felt some trampling in the last year and a half. Would you agree? Trampling might be an understatement. We have felt some. We had to put ourselves in check and say, hey, I got it. I'm spending all this money. Let me <laughs> protect my investment. Uh, yeah. That that last year of high school, the first year of college, and from what you've shown me, mm-hmm. the second year of college, I have a lot of friends out there who are graduating in freshmen in college and it's 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 a year, man. It is it is wow. That's all I can say. So we came today to give parents a little advice about the senior year of high school and the freshman and sophomore year of college. So um first thing is your baby is a senior. And, you know, as a parent, they'll always be your baby. But the truth is, they're almost an adult. But they're a senior in high school. And now's the time for SAT, ACT applications and all that so if you have a highly motivated child who's just on it and ready to go to college a lot of this will not apply consider yourself lucky kneel down and pray for thanksgiving and thankfulness tonight because neither one of our children were overly motivated were they no we had it was hands-on and you have to it's a parent i say please Print out all the testing dates for the SAT and the ACT. Print them out. I say get uh, information early on. Definitely right now. If you hadn't gotten this information from your child's high school, how to get a transcript. Make sure that they are finalizing all their courses and that everything is in order. Fines paid off because schools will hold a fine from fifth grade all the way up to 12th grade. I agree. And don't get, I mean, enjoy proms and all the senior hoopla, but take care of business first. Right. Because none of that will make a difference if your child cannot graduate in May. Right. Check and make sure. Uh, my advice for the uh, ACT and ACT is, is find out the date uh, which test allow you to buy the test booklet. Because once the, it's a, you can take the test. And they would send you the test booklet. Well, you have to pay for it, of course. They would send you the test booklet and the test. That way your child can study and see where they need help on. So and you make can- your child study. If your child's not naturally motivated for it, 
I like the way Dr. Shipman, Dr. Shipman taught me something. He had the first of our three to graduate, and he literally cut out time on Sunday evenings. Right. And his son would be sitting at the table going over test questions with... And unfortunately, it kind of turned into a kindergarten sight word kind of thing where you have to almost watch them because if you don't have the highly motivated child, they really don't want to do it and you, you really need them to study for it. I agree. If you have to just sit there with them or cut their time out, you just going to have to do it. Remember, this is a, an investment. And I know a lot of parents are going to say, well, they old enough. They 18. No, they're not. They're not. They still children. Um, I, I've equated my child and most of my friends' children who are this age. It's like they are just getting into the maturity we expected at tenth grade, and now here it is. It's time to go to college. Um, other thing, parents. Um, even after they take the test, before they take the test, they need to be looking at colleges. Um, as a teacher, I'm going to tell you, they're going to just randomly throw out college. Just they've heard of. Oh, I want to go to Duke. I want to go to Tulane. A lot of it will be about athletics. I want to go to Tuskegee. Yes. A lot of it will be about athletics and what they've heard their parents say and friends say. They won't know what they want to major in. You got to sit down and talk to them. The Internet's a great place to start. Um, Me and my son made a spreadsheet of requirements. After his first test scores came in and we had his preliminary end of year GPA, we started looking at requirements and making a spreadsheet of possible colleges that just off the rip, without any question, you hit all the requirements and you can get accepted in because you have the baseline requirements. Now, the state of Georgia is a requirements only state, meaning um, unless you're going to a private school, you don't have to interview. Even at our best schools, um, you don't have to interview once, if you have the SAT requirement and the GPA requirement, uh, you you are automatically accepted. A lot of states are not like that. You have to look at it. Um, states like California don't even take the SAT. So you need to know what your child has to have and be ready. Um, state of Georgia is also a non-essay state. Did Zaire have to write any essays? I think he had to write two. But those were for scholarships, right? Right. It was for scholarships. But for actual admittance to a college, most colleges in the state make you write a very brief statement. And as long as you have the baseline requirements, you are accepted. Um, If you're borderline, they will look at those statements. So, yeah, put some effort into them. But you really want to look at the colleges that your child is going to be accepted into and know what the requirements are. And I say take a college trip. Yes. I say two things. Go... If you if you're really serious about a college and you narrow it down to about three, take the normal college trip that everybody takes and mm-hmm. take the tour. But then I say go back on your own, go back on the campus. You and your child, they won't kick you out. At least you're trying to go somewhere you don't need to be. But just you and your child go walk the campus so you can see yourself. And ask the college students. They'll be glad to talk to you. Ask them questions. They will tell you the truth about the college. And me and my son visited about three colleges. And one of the first things we did was, and became very realistic, uh, BJ, or we are from a suburb of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, We went to one college that was in the middle of nowhere. It was a great college. But my son, basically for all purposes, is A suburb kid, he likes a mall, he likes to be able to go fast food. Um, When he saw this campus, even though it was one of his top picks, I said, well, BJ, look at it seriously, because at at, at 8 o'clock on a Saturday night, this is it. This is what you got to do. And I need you to be really honest about whether this is where you can live. And, um, you know, after we looked at the two other colleges, one was definitely urban. The one he actually is attending is right outside of Atlanta. And the other one was a little bit more suburban. And he chose to be in the school that was a little bit more urban because that's what he's used to. And I got it. Um, What a lot of the kids will say when they come back. I have friends who have kids say, well, he wanted to go to the college, but he didn't realize it was that far out. I went to the University of Georgia. And I know a lot of people had a lot of problems with Athens because Athens is very isolated. It's a great city. Great city. 
biggest town on, I probably should say town, but if you're really used to a fast lifestyle, huge nightlife, it may not be the place for you. So, with that being said, let's just assume your child gets accepted to a college he wants to go to. Yay! He graduates from high school. Yay! You did all the parties. You barbecued for him. All the friends came over. You cleaned up. And now it's summer. The summer before college. Mr. Shipman, Dr. Shipman, will tell you, your child needs to be making money. Yes. Saving his yes. gift money. And out earning money. That's probably been the biggest lesson I've learned from Dr. Shipman is kids chew through money at such a rate that it is unbelievable. They're gonna they're going to play to try to play the gear role on you and say, Hey, can I at least buy me one thing for my birthday? I mean for my graduation that I really wanted. You say yes. But then I here's my suggestion. I say go get you one of them old fashioned pickle jars. Put some tape around that lid. Put a hole in the middle. Every time your child get paid, hold your hand out and say, give me that money. You put some of that money inside that jar. Because I'm going to tell you, those college books are no joke. And I was a little bit different. Uh, my son received thousands of dollars, no lie, thousands of dollars in graduation money. And gifts, just gifts. People just handed him $100 bills. And my goal was I counted every dime of graduation money he got. And I gave him 10% of it. The rest went into savings. And I was like, you're going to put this away. Because next year when you ask for money, I'm going to direct you to your own money. And it was a good decision. It really was. He he had some spending money. And he directed. I did not, however, his summer job. I should have done what you said. I should have made him put some of it away. Oh, my God. They graduate. And if they get that first summer job, it is truly. They are having summer fun. Big fun. My son went everywhere this summer. I mean, he worked. He worked 40 hours. But on those every hour that he wasn't working, he was having a good time and spending money. I, I just think, especially going into my when I say my child's second year of college, you have to make them give you some money, so you have to force them to save. I'm just looking at the cost of college. Number one, uh, books. Uh, I just spent two hundred fifty dollars on one math book this semester for a child. Uh, both children, I in college, I spent about six hundred dollars worth of books for second semester. Yeah, and then you're talking about food. They're gonna they're gonna want food. Well let's talk meal plans. Meal plans have been the uh, me and Dr. Shipman both went to college. We both have multiple degrees. The one thing that I have noticed that was a huge change, tuition wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. It has been housing and meal plan that have knocked me over. Mm -hmm. Meal plan is required with housing in a lot of colleges now. When I went through college, it was not a requirement. Um, and it is so expensive. It is so expensive. So here's the problem. If your child is not a cook, you kind of want them on meal plan to make sure that they're eating properly. Or even on the meal plan. I think one of the problems I'm I've, I'm study fussing at my children at, it's like, hey, did you go to the cafeteria and eat or did you go eat? Well, I'll tell they'll you what. Call, they'll catch you in the middle of the day or they'll catch you in the middle. I missed, I missed the dinner time. You might need to keep up with the dinner time. Yeah. I know it when we was at Tuskegee. We all make sure we caught that meal time. We knew what time every day that cafeteria opened and closed. A lot of campuses have outside restaurants contract on campus. For instance, my son's college has a lot of major restaurants on campus that he can use his meal plan card for to eat with. But even with that, and I get every month, well, every time he purchases anything, I can see it. It comes right up on my phone and on my computer. And... Even with that, it's just teaching your child to budget, learning to budget. Um, you know, we have a meal plan where I'm allowed, he gets X number of dollars, I pay X number of dollars a, a month, and he's allowed to eat off of that card like cash. And they get a prorated discount. He can eat at the dining halls or any of these restaurants. And I'm watching what he's eating, and I'm like, dude, why are you buying three, four dollar milkshakes? And not eating. And he's like, oh, 
Well, we went out for pizza and I wanted a milkshake with it. So he's spending money to buy pizza and going and buying a milkshake for three dollars. And and you know, teaching them about the value of money, making good health choices, making good financial health choices, and that is spending your money to get you the richest nutrient based diet you can spending the least amount of money to get the most nutrients and the most nutrition. He's not very good at it. Um, He has been sick once. My baby's a freshman. His first semester, he got sick probably three weeks in. And he called. He was like, Mom, my stomach hurts. I was like, your stomach hurts? What's wrong? He said, and I said, when is the last time you had a fruit and or a vegetable? And he was like, I don't know. You know, I've been eating pizza and burgers and milkshakes. And again, it's the first time most of our children have eaten extended periods without our direction. And I was like, BJ. You need to use the bathroom. I mean, he's going to kill me for saying that, but it was the truth. And he was like, oh, I just don't feel good. I was like, go get some applesauce. Go eat an apple. Go eat some oranges. Go eat your vegetables. Have a salad. And he did in like two days. He was like, God, mom, you were right. I feel so much better. And I was like, baby, you got to eat a well-rounded diet. I've taught you these things. You got to do it. And I think you, you also make sure they have to know how to take care of themselves when they do get sick. Uh, colds or whatever else they catch on campus. Make sure they have a small medicine kit. You know, other basic things. Uh, make sure they know how to go over to student health if yeah. they get sick, because you're paying for that. Yeah. And if you're not paying for it, they, they at least have your insurance card. Make sure they know to keep up with the insurance card. My son, um, I, he do, he didn't understand that your medical insurance card is as valuable to you as your driver's license. Um, you know, in today's world of a, a stolen identity, they've got to be responsible with those insurance cards, medical insurance cards, because anybody could get it. And we probably gone through three this semester or this year. The next thing is the, 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 the nuts and the bolt of college doing their schoolwork. And I know this is radio, but we're going to have a pause for prayer right here over the topic of College freshmen doing their schoolwork. Would you like to start, Dr. Shipman, or shall I? I tell you what. <laughs> I tried two approaches. Uh, my daughter, who goes to the University of Alabama, pretty much she was hands off. She's self motivated, she's a go getter. She can get in there and get her work done. Yay. Now, when it came to these boys. Oh, Jesus. Lord have mercy. It's a whole different ball game. Now, at first, my hands were off. But it, honestly, I made a mistake. I think you have to be. You got to gotta talk to them all the time. Nonstop. And how about grade. grades. Yeah. You got to talk to them about, are you going to class? Are you doing your schoolwork? How are your grades? And you can tell us they're lying. Yes. And try your best. If if the school allows you to see their grades, look at their grades. The wonderful term FERPA. I don't. I cannot remember what those letters are. But FERPA is the program where your child, because they are a legal adult, has to give you permission to look at your grades. Um, I love my son's college uh, president. He said, whatever it takes, your children must allow you to look at their grades, how they're spending their money. Everything. And they can deny you, but if they deny you and you're sending them a dime, you got a problem. Cut the dime off. I agree. Um, I have, my son's school allows me to go in. I see attendance. I see grades. I see syllabuses. I see it when assignments are posted and when they are due. And I was like you, Dr. Shipman. I did the hands off. I didn't even do hands off. I said, well, a semester is 18 weeks. I will look once every six weeks. Major error. Um, By the time six weeks, the first six weeks had passed, he had done more damage to his grades and learned some really bad habits. I mean, like not going to class, bad habits. Um, Asking at the last minute, can I turn in late work? Uh, Just bad habits. And so I recommend to any parent get in there and unfortunately, like I said, you don't know if you have a self-motivator and you can stop. But err on the side of I don't have a self-motivator 
or he's going to change when he gets all that freedom. And I need to make sure I catch it before it gets too far away from me. And and don't kill them. They are going to, they they might, we're going to be thinking about, they might make mistakes. Uh, give them a chance. But work with them and talk. Constantly again, talk and try to set them, go over how to study again. How to talk to professors. How to how to make sure, look, you're in school for one purpose. To go to school and learn something. And let them, and like I said, during the breaks, uh, especially Christmas break and summer break, let them work. Let them see, do you want to do this the rest of your life or do you want to go to school? And ask them. Um, honestly, I, me and my son are having a very honest dialogue right now about whether college at this moment is the right place for him. Uh, and I always tell him, baby, if you tell me no, college at this moment is not the right place, that doesn't mean in two years you can't go. It means at this moment you may need a little bit more support and a, a, a little less freedom because you don't want them to get in a situation where they cannot handle it. So let's get to the hard things. And we got about five more minutes left. Things that I have learned. Alcohol and drugs are real on the college campus. You have to have real conversations with your children about alcohol and drugs. Your child will say to you, marijuana is not that bad. It's legal in this and that state. And it may be even legal in your state. But as I explained to my child, it's no big deal until you're in trouble. And I'm getting called. Because even though you're a legal adult, you can't pay anything. You have no money. And my request of my son, and I hope he's living up to it. I can't say that he is or is not. Is I'm not saying do or don't. I chose not to make a judgment call on it. I said, don't do anything that you can't take full accountability for. Meaning, if you get caught doing it, you don't have to contact me. And it doesn't affect my wallet. If it will, you don't need to do it until it's all you. And I explained to him that I knew people who work professional jobs every day of their life. Had their degrees and did whatever they want as far as drugs and alcohol. And when they did get caught, they never called their parents. Their mother and father never found out about it because they were grown and they were old enough to take full responsibility of their behaviors. And I had to say to them, if you can't do that, don't do the crime if you can't do the time, for lack of a better term. I agree 100%. And I just feel like if you don't have the money, you definitely shouldn't be doing it. Right. That. Don't ask me for pizza money and go spend it on drugs and alcohol. Not cool. Mm-hmm. Not cool at all. And parents, you got to be aware. Um, other thing. Woo, girl, uh, significant others. Because some people actually have girls. We have a bunch of boys. Don't we? Yeah. Oh, God. They go off to college and fall in love. Dear God. <laughs> and you got to teach them. Because it's the first time in their life that they're allowed to spend limitless time with a significant other. Up until the point where they leave your house, most kids had some kind of guidelines around it. You know, my son was allowed to have his girlfriends over, but at 830, girlfriends got to be at their mama's house. We don't do that. We're not staying at the boyfriend's girlfriend's house all night, and she's not staying over here. But then you go to college, and you just have to teach them. You have to have, again, safe sex talks, responsibleness, all these conversations. And they are not grown. The law says they are grown and they can get in adult behaviors and adult trouble. But the reality of it is, is they are as mature as they were the day before they turned 18. Uh-huh. Just please continue to talk to them about safe sex because you don't want to be a gr- grandparent. And you don't want them to be rushed into parenthood before they're ready. Ugh. Yeah. That's a rough one right there. Absolute rough one. Well, but, Williams, I think we have hit well, it all. Let's end on a positive note. Okay. I will say, even though my son is two handfuls running over, and he has been a lot in the his whole life, actually, a lot, I will have to say one of the most beautiful things is watching him grow in these last 12 months from being a senior in high school to this young man who's a freshman. He's not hitting every marker the way I would want him to, and he's not fully mature, but it has been a delight watching him 
grow up and learn things. Even watching the news with him is different now that he has gotten to a point where he has a peer group and they can discuss me uh, media and politics together. It is wonderful watching him find his adult voice. And so I've enjoyed it. Yeah, I agree too. When they come home from breaks or even talking on the phone, it's a totally different child than it was when they were in high school. So it's not all bad. It's just, we just want to get you a head up that they're not grown. They got a lot of growing to do. Enjoy it, but manage it. Yep, still got them. Still got them as parents and help them get through this. Try not to fuss at them too much, but just try to keep them on track of what is the purpose. And enjoy your freedom. Yes, yes, enjoy it. If you have no other kids at home, congratulations. And if you have other kids at home, enjoy having one less there. (laughs) Because when the summertime or those breaks hit, Oh, yeah, they back. They are back in full effect. Full effect. All right, Dr. Shipman, close us out. All right. I want to, again, if you want to reach me or you're trying to look and purchase a book or see one of our great books we have, December Celebrations or the first day of school, you can always catch it on Amazon, Walmart.com, and Audible. We're really pushing this Audible. Listen to the books. They're great. Yes, and it's cheaper. Also, you can look catch me on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Google Plus, YouTube, and always at TerranceShipman.com. That's T-E-R-A-N-C-E-S-H-I-P-M-A-N dot C-O-M. And in closing, as I say, every every time we have a podcast, I am special, I am smart, I am somebody. See you later, world. Mr. Shipman's class, Mr. Shipman's class.